Oh, someone does. It's Friday. Friday. It's Friday. Your boys are here. Hot boy Shane Cannibal, Gypsy Mike G. I'm, I'm almost caught up on my timeline. Just give me a second. Oh, okay. You got to oh. catch up on your feed on the classic, group text, classic. Shane. Kidding. I'm looking at my fantasy team. Oh, oh okay. you're not looking at the group text chain? The chain letter? Chain oh, mail? Letter. Group chain, chain mail. armor? Guys, it's this, Friday. This is a, Did you guys say that already? You missed that. Yeah. This is Friday. This is final Friday, mm-hmm. but it's also a very special Friday. Is it because we, we have Teddy Grams? Grams? Yeah, well, that's yeah. one of the reasons. We have it's Teddy, Teddy Grams, Grams reason. vehicle, guys. Yeah. yeah. Oh, great. We well, also made a hideous mistake because there's alcohol here and we should be drinking water and milk. Yes. With the Teddy Grams? You've, you've made a grave mistake. We, you guys we like Dunkaroos? Everything. I love Dunkaroos. Dunkaroos are great. When was the last time you had a Dunkaroo? Probably like a couple years. In the 90s. You know what's also great? The movie we're reviewing today. Yes. This is probably the best movie we've reviewed on Final Friday. It's I up there. haven't been this excited since we bulked up that one time. Yeah. Remember when I wore purple and then you guys didn't? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even sure. though I said it on our group. Shane. Thread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I remember. Um, if you don't know, mm-hmm. we're reviewing Hawk Jones. Hawk Jones. The Hawk. Hawk Jones. <laughs> Oh, Goat Jones? Goat yeah. Jones. Now, this is a movie was made, or at least at least in 1986. Mm-hmm. And if you know nothing about... You should, you should know Hawk Jones. But if you yeah. don't know Hawk Jones, Hawk Jones is a movie that is like kind of like vice crime detective yeah. type style. Ripped right out of the 80s with that, all that flavor. Right out of the 80s. Except the coolest part about this movie is it's shot entirely... With children. Yes. And not like children playing children. These children are playing adults. There's a police chief with a mustache. Yeah. The details. That's that's peak comedy. (laughs) Yeah. The the details in this movie are what make it so amazing. Because these kids can barely act in all honesty. They can barely act. But the details make it just like absolute it's honestly an adorable movie it is and that's the thing like you're not watching this movie for th- these are just children like they're not actor children what do you think the average they're, age of i think it's eight yeah I think it's seven or eight yeah dude you could tell when hawk at the end of the movie starts laughing he he, he literally sounds like a fucking toddler yeah. sounds like a, a newborn it's yeah. <laughs> some of those like the little details like brian said like when they go to the the club scene and they're just pouring milk so into good, the glasses. So good. It's like, it's peak comedy. You it know how really fucking is. like in cop movies, when cops go on benders, they do coke. Yeah. They should have had Hawk go on a coke bender, but with coke. Cola. <laughs> okay. With okay. Cola. Are you thinking I could catch this in my mouth if I throw it really high? No chance. No, no chance. Should I try it? Yes. Yeah. I, I was so close to those. I, but so we knew close. you were going to fail. Am I going to eat that off the rug? You yeah. should. Because, like, to. you know, have don't, a little respect for the don't people who live here. I also love the smooth jazz riffs. Like, they try to oh nail the crime God. down. It, it, they try to do everything right in, like, a cop movie. Yes. It It is so 80s. The it's sound. so yeah. fucking the 80s. The, the sound the guy was like, this is, this is 80s, right? Yes. So I was going to play Fleetwood Mac. Is <laughs> <laughs> it 70s? You can go your <laughs> own I like my way. socks, my long pink socks. I've seen better. Brian? I like them. So, Brian, you're wearing shorts today. I am. It's cold outside. It's very but cold outside still. Yeah. So, spring is in like, what, two days? Yeah. yeah. Crazy. I know. Uh, but we're not talking about spring. We're talking about Hawk Jones. And the Hawk. And we're talking about how every time the Hawk has to drive a car. I also love the scene where he first gets into the car and he can't put it into drive. And he's really struggling. Yeah, it's funny. Because he clearly can't even see out the front window. So they always show him like step on the gas and then it's a cutaway and then clearly an 80 year old man driving the car away. Right. It's the only time. It's stunt, stunt driver. So does this movie stunt open cop? with crime? Does it open with, it a, opens wa- with crime. a wave of like um, crime. bank robberies yes. and stuff? I love it because like, like you'll see the kids like commit the crime. I love it. They have like painted on like chin straps and the beards. The scars they the have. Scars. No, um, do I, no, I should probably swallow first. Yeah. I threw a whole bunch in there. You probably week. shouldn't chew into the mic either. <laughs> and no, were, we like that here. They didn't ASMR. do special effects with bullets. They did like pal, like comic book yes. style with the yes. bullets. Hilarious. But you do see like the flash too. It's it's funny. 
No, it's good. They do it well. Let's talk about the mob boss. Love that. Kid. Oh, Coppola. It was incredible. incredible. Amazing. Yeah. Second best character yeah. behind the police chief. <laughs> what about Hawk Joe? Hawk is great. No, Hawk's goaded, but... <laughs> I love the friggin' also like the Betty Boop rendition that one girl does on stage and <laughs> oh, like club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the like the the jazz club yeah. singer. <laughs> uh, what was her name? Wait. It was uh, like Pinky Toes yes, or something. Yeah. Are you talking about the blonde girl that like gets no, murder, that's, murdered? That's no. Lola Barnwood, the the, yeah, Lola. the, the about, socialite, yeah. the Hollywood socialite. I'm talking about the girl that was in the club dancing on stage. I think Brian's right. Her name was Pinky Toes or something like that. Oh, I like Lola better. Lola well, was great, and I love the relationship between her and Hawk. Hawk. <laughs> it's amazing. I also love when, like, a Hawk eventually, like, the crime boss knows where he lives, so he has to just crash at his partners. It's, like, such a buddy cop 80s it is, movie. It it's is. great. I felt like I was watching, like, um, Danny Glover and Mel Gibson. Yeah, like, Lethal Weapon just, like, with kids replacing the yes. roles. And way better. Yeah, way better. <laughs> It's fair. I'm talking Hawk. Hawk's better. Well, Hawk is better, yeah. He's not better than Mel Gibson. Is Mel is Mel Gibson goaded? No. Hawk is. Hawk Jones is goaded. He though. really is. All right, so let's go back to your point when you wanted to talk about the bank robbery. Crime, wave of crime. No one knows what's going on. There's just like a, a lot. And I guess only Hawk Jones has a, like an idea that Coppola, yeah. the mobster, is behind this. And... Um, I know that when he like goes to the chief and brings it up, mm. always is pushing back. Well, that's because you find out the chief's being bribed. He's in dirty not, po- not he's with a fucking dirty cop. Yeah. Not with cash though. It's like <laughs> truffle chocolates. <laughs> he's just sending him boxes of candy. Huh? He's like, that- he's innocent. I don't want to hear it. I love when they get the actual like <laughs> evidence, inadmissible evidence. He's like, I don't want to see it. He's <laughs> he's innocent. They're like, but he clearly ordered these hits. <laughs> that would work on me. I feel. A box of chocolates. Give me some good, food, like watermelon. I'd let I'd, I'd let you get away with murder if you gave me a watermelon. Uh, the chief is goat great too, though, because he's like so I'm off to my ears on paperwork. He's got so the alka seltzer on the table. He's dipping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like it's incredible. I even love it too because they have like the asshole cops in there too. Yes. I think his name is Gunner, and they just make fun of Hawk Jones. He's like, oh, Jones, you're because he's a special yeah. investigator. He's like not like a typical cop. He's like, you're a wimp. What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> All the insults are like little kid insults. I know, They're like, I look at the wimp over there. I love it. I also love the one shootout at the uh, convenience store. The cops just randomly open fire on the guy. They do like the hostage negotiator yeah. situation because Hawk Jones is partnered up with a sassy cop named McAllister. Yeah, very sassy. And Hawk Jones don't, I don't stand her. Hawk Jones does not play with others. He plays no. by himself. He's a man that operates by his own law. Yes. Does his own investigations, and they partnered up with some some broad. I couldn't believe when he said that. I love Dude. it. He goes <laughs> abroad. <laughs> A hawk. I mean, they, they definitely like throw in that just like old, subtle '80s yeah. misogyny. Like it's, it's so incredible. fucking funny. Oh, oh, we also God. point out that the mob boss at the beginning he said the crime is not not big enough. He needs destruction, chaos, <laughs> with a big ass cigar in his mouth. Oh my God, the fake cigars and all that. Oh, it's yeah, I think it gets bigger in each shot. <laughs> because <laughs> the cigar just gets longer. <laughs> But, like, going back to that shootout, I love how, like, none of the cops get shot. Their hats keep flying off from the bullets. Yeah, I mean, they have the whole hostage negotiation. And McAllister kind of takes over. She basically squashes a tomato with her foot saying that's going to be this thug's head. The hug, uh, the sorry, the thug comes outside. Yep. Kind of like they open fire on him, never gets hit, takes off. Oh, my God. When they're chasing after him and McAllister's yelling, stop, into the mic, the megaphone. Yeah. And eventually, like... <laughs> They go into an alley where Hawk is like looking for him, yeah. and then he kind of gets the jump on Hawk, and then McAllister gets the jump yeah. on him. So it's like they booked him, but McAllister's just like, I saved your butt. And he's like, No, you only gave me more trouble. Yeah. So yeah, they, they have this like dynamic that kind of reoccurs throughout the movie. Also, a little romantic side plot at one point. You know, McAllister and Hawk Jones. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. And then. What was the blonde one? Lola. Name? Lola. She likes him too. Yeah, well, they get well, jealous of each other at that restaurant. Well, it looked. Oh my god, the restaurant scene is so funny. <laughs> Where they 
They're like doing. It almost reminded me of "It's Always Sunny," where like Hawk <laughs> was gonna send over a house red to so fucking fun. It's one that, of the yeah, best true. episodes. Yeah. But um, yeah. So Hawk Jones, Lola comes back into town. He's like, I thought you were in the big city or something like that. Dude, she randomly shows up at yeah. his house. Yes, she's just she, in his house, right? She's like, I was just offered three movie roles. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. She? How does she die though? She gets killed by the mob boss, but I forgot how he. She gets killed by the destroyer, doesn't the she? Destro- the destroyer. I've been just- waiting to talk about the destroyer. I love the destroyer. It's amazing. He just comes in as a straight assassin with a beret. He looks like yeah. a revolutionary. <laughs> it yes. So he looks like he's like fucking made up, like out of patchwork. He's got scars all over his face. So basically, the mob boss is like tired of Hawk Jones getting away with everything. They can't stop him, so they get the. Destroyer, who is supposed to be like a cybernetic, like, yeah, uh, literally. You're right. I, I, he kind of reminded me of like yeah. some kind of like '80s Universal soldier, soldier type yeah. guy, like the getting, Terminator, yeah, uh, villain, G- getting fucking flown in, literally for the sole purpose because they need a specialist to take out Hawk Jones. <laughs> who else is gonna do it? Yeah, I mean, he doesn't take out Hawk Jones though. He takes Lola out, but now Hawk Jones wants revenge. Yeah. He's not gonna let this slide. Of course not. So this is where he gets uh, McAllister, right, to help him. He's like, I'm going to need your help. Yeah, and this is kind of like where he admits that he finally needs her help. I mean, and they go, like, way outside the bounds even, like, because, like I said, nobody even thought that Coppola, or nobody wanted to, to yeah. say that Coppola was involved. They went into Coppola's house and got inadmissible evidence to link him to these crimes. Yeah, and since the Chief's not listening, they got to bring justice down themselves. It's true. So they're going to go into Coppola's home, bro. At, Hawk is fucking strapped, dude. He oh, go, he goes in blazing grenades, fucking machine guns. Oh yeah, he 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 loads out, and this is where he actually just starts murdering he all straight the up children. Murders a lot. Yeah, he just starts like, you do get the flashes. I love the fucking goons. That <laughs> the goon. they're all so funny. The goon deaths are great. The way they just like sell their <laughs> injuries, they're just like <laughs> and then fall over. I also, just the details too, like even in the interrogation, he's just fucking chewing on his apple, like oh classic cop stuff. Yeah. It's, the movie's just fucking Again, classic. You said it, this movie's like, it's cute as hell. Dude. It's so it adorable. Is. It's yeah. so adorable. I even like, like you said, like the, in the scene with the, like the restaurant, the, kind of like make it like a jazz club where like the girl singing on stage and you have the people playing the, the trombone, the, the trombones and the trumpets. So good. You know what shocked me about this movie? It ran in like almost an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah, a whole hour and a half. I, I thought I, it, was it didn't be feel like, long. No, I thought it was gonna be like fifty, maybe push an hour. They got an hour and a half out of this. It just like they don't like it, every scene is adorable. Like it, it just yeah. gets like doesn't stop in every way. They make the details so good. Yeah, I don't understand how this movie is not more popular. I don't either. I it blows my mind. This movie is so under it's the a radar. Great kid. Well, because this is the thing, like. They don't like exploit the kids in any way. No, it's like legit, no. like a very we're wholesome. Not like, like we're not watching fucking cuties here. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying it's like a legit like it's just child. They're not even. I can't even call them actors because I don't think they're any not, of them did they, anything right. They I were just kids that yeah, were in yeah. the movie, and it worked. It did. Like it's funny. Yeah, I think it, the fact it, that they were not actors made it more I adorable. Think that, was, that was the charm to yeah. it. Yeah. Do you think it's on the level like? Of like, I thought Flying Ryan was like super like charming. Yeah, I fucking love that movie. But it's I think definitely this, on the level. I think this movie probably a little more. It actually. probably because this, yeah. this movie's better. Because yeah. I think like the guy who directed this movie has directed nothing like big, but he's directed like thirty movies for real. Yeah, he's not like a one off guy. I was looking through his like filmography. It's nothing like good. How many people total you think have seen Hawk Jones? Not many. Not like, a lot. That, how hard was it for us to even just find this like on like the internet? It's very hard. His movie's buried. Like I was when you finally found it, I was so happy because I was like, oh, we could finally like review it. But like, there's not even people on the internet talking about Hawk Jones, right? Like, I think maybe yeah. one like other group did this movie. Yeah. It's probably a couple of people that reviewed it, but yeah. not a lot. All, right. all, all, all podcasts that probably review, like, kind of like what we do for viewing, like, either lost or low budget movies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this guy has directed 22 movies, mainly horror movies, it looks like later on. <laughs> wow. So he, he started with Hawk Jones. 
Dude, that, this is his debut. What up? Yeah. That, this is like not, this is, can't be an easy movie to make either. You're oh. dealing with a bunch of kids. Like, a bunch of kids are in the fucking police station <laughs> right. poking around. Like, how, I don't, like, it's not, can't be an easy movie to do. Then in like the early 2000s, he did like The Looking Glass, Destination Mars, Monarch of the Moon. Like, nothing big, but. Oh, then he did Rapture, Dominion, Lethulu, Masterminds, The UFO Conclusion, Rise of the Empire, Apocalypse, President Evil. Like, Come on. So what I'm thinking about is like, you know, kids are fucking difficult. Oh, yeah. So how you rile up this many kids to be in a cast, like it's not, can have been, couldn't have been easy like to shoot this. I feel. No. Well, there's that like three minute post credit outtake Hoopers, scene. Yeah. Think about how long it actually was. I know. Probably hours. Well, just think of when we used to film stuff, the amount of t takes it took and stuff like that. Like, I can only imagine working with well, eight-year-olds. Well, it's year -old. between, like, laughing at each other and also, like, you know, forgetting what to say and stuff. That happens all but the time. They, they yeah. nailed all the stereotypes. Yes. They, they hit literally everything. Even Coppola's wife is, like, the, the of course, like, the, the extravagant wife of the mob boss that needs to be taken out. I love like it. it. It's, I just, love it's it. done well. Hawk goes right on into the club and, and like <laughs> fights his five goons, takes him out because no one's taking Hawk out. Dude, <laughs> I'm so glad you mentioned that. That's the scene I laughed at the most when he's taking the goons and throwing them over the table. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they're clearly like dummies being thrown over the table. I was crying. I also love that this movie ends in a Steven Seagal sword fight. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, I mean... I don't know if we mentioned that McAllister does get taken yes. and he does need to go like it, it almost safe. like he needs to go invade the house of yes. Coppola. And, and that, that's where he starts. Like, he gr he throws a grenade in a bathroom stall incredible. and take a guy out like, oh, he fakes that kid out too. Yeah. The kid thought he, he like had locked him in there. Oh, oh, game playing that shit. <laughs> Crawls right under, gets the kid in there, kills him with a grenade. It's insane. I, I literally love the scene too, where uh, the destroyer has like before Lola dies when Lola and him are, are, uh, cap like they're mm -hmm. in that room and the destroyer's like getting through yes. the door and he tries there's just like that one window to escape from and he tries to jump on top of the box but he falls inside he the cardboard box in. and can't get yeah. back out <laughs> <laughs> let me put this out, out there they try to do this today I think it would be god awful yeah no they couldn't do it there's a charm to the 80s that yeah. made it work well, I mean like this movie also plays on like a lot of stereotypes you, they just wouldn't do nowadays either yeah, I think it would suck yeah, it, it it was perfect for the time it was in. Yeah, they made fun of like female cops and stuff like that, and like it, it is what it is. But it, it it's funny back then because yeah. the stuff used to happen all the time. But it does have a like. It, at the end of the day, they do work together. Like there is a McAllister takes out the destroyer exactly. So it's like it it plays off the stereotypes, but shows how like working together work. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's a wholesome like, ass movie. It, it, and but think about it, like if, yeah. if you're gonna take down Coppola, a master swordsman, you can't do <laughs> yeah. it alone. You're gonna need some help. Maybe uh this podcast could learn a, a few things from Hawk Jones, you know, teammates and <laughs> working together instead of devaluing one member and one member only. Yeah, right, so that's really all I had to say about Hawk Jones. I Unless mean, you guys got more you want that to... great sword fight where he, he takes out Coppola. Takes him out. Takes him out. And he's the hero. Yeah. Hawk Jones is the hero. I mean, we always knew he would be. Him yeah. in his trench coat. I love Beautiful. it. Beautiful thing. Hawk right. Jones. And then... Uh, Incredible movie. The end. The chief shows up again. Right? Yeah. And yeah. He's, now I'm... I guess now they got everything He can't be needed. bribed anymore. There's everything. Yeah, exactly. There's no bribing here. And how's it end? Hawk and uh, he just walks away or something. He smiles at the camera. Yeah, it's Hawk Jones. It's a classic '80s. I'm Hawk surprised Hawk. something didn't blow up as he walked away. <laughs> Hawk Jones. Yo, go. that would be incredible. That's the one thing this movie missed. I think <laughs> yeah, was the yeah. him walking away from an explosion. It would have been perfect. You just see the word "explosion" in the background with fake like it should have been like popcorn popping in a oh microwave and him just walking away. <laughs> <laughs> would have been great. Kaplow. Bam. That's Hawk Jones. Fucking yeah. great vehicle. I think. You know what we're going to say, but we might as well do it because it's the rules. Four, three, two, one. Oh, hell yeah. Watch so it, it definitely. Oh, yeah. uh, Watch the fucking movie. It, we definitely hyped this up, but it was well worth it. Yeah. Like when you first showed me, Bri, I was like, this has potential to be funny and get old. Yes. It was great. Yeah. Like that was my fear, like it, that it would get old very fast, but they kept all of those they kept it fresh and yeah. they they used like 
everything you could possibly do, I guess, from the late seventies and early eighties in yeah. terms of like buddy cop movies and put them into this in all the details. Yeah, and it worked with the kids. It, it just worked. This movie's trash with adults. And the fact that like it's the kids are what's doing is what makes yeah. this movie so funny. I mean, how are you? Re how are you casting this with adults? Who's, exactly. Who's like? Oh, who's Hawk? Who's Hawk? Denzel, maybe. Denzel's Hawk. Yeah. Uh, Susan Sarandon's obviously Lola Barnwood. Uh, yes, yes, that makes sense. So good. The police chief actually, uh, it would have to be like Michael Danny B. Glover. Jordan? <laughs> no, it's Danny uh, Glover. Yeah, Michael. Who's that guy? Ernie. Hot. Ernie Hudson. Yeah. <laughs> Ernie Hudson would be a good one too. Actually, who's the mob boss. Who's a good boss? Mob? Slick back hair. In the eighties, who would be the mob boss? Oh, there? that that would be uh, Joe Pesci. Mm. I like that. I like that. Was the, who would be the destroyer? Would it be like Dolph Lundgren? I can see. I can see oh, some Euro oh, guy. Dolph Lundgren. A Swede. Would, you have a yeah. Swede? That Dolph Lundgren works. You see, yeah, you can't yeah. do Sean Claude because he'd be the good guy. Uh, <laughs> Dolph. Dolph works. Yeah. And then the the partner cop would be Halle Berry. For sure. It'd be awesome, actually. McAllister? Yeah. They, like, like hint at, like, affection because, like, when they flirt with each other. There's one scene. The, the eye-winking scene? Yes. And that's yeah. just how they do it. That's all they do. It's just, like, an eye-wink. Yeah. I, that's right. what I was worried about, too. I was like, oh, how weird does this movie get? Mm -hmm. But they don't do it at all. Yeah. And, which it, is, and, which it, and it was perfect. Yeah, they, they kept it right. They did it right. It's did right. It's done right. Listen, this movie's cute as shit. Yeah. It really is. It really is. And you should way. watch it. Agreed. And now next week, what is we're next doing week? a sequel. <gasps> we're doing no Camp Blood 2. Two? Two. There's two of them? That's There's right. actually nine. This is the sequel of the first Jesus. movie we did on this podcast, right? Yep. Camp Blood. Camp Blood is the first ever movie we did. Camp and Blood. Camp Blood has a, a, a strong history with Camp us. Camp Blood! As we've said, <laughs> exactly. We've probably seen the first three together. I've seen all of them. I have them on Blu-ray. So we're doing Camp Blood 2 next week. Should right. be fun. Yeah, that's right. I have a, let's end this episode on a chant, would you? What's the chant? Hawk Jones Goat. 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 We'll see you next week. Woo! Hawk Jones Goat.